Hi, and welcome back to Don't Mind. I'm K.A. Stats, the writer and creator. And I'm Travis Vengroff, the producer and director, and together we are Fool and Scholar Productions. We've gotten a few comments and questions regarding Don't Mind Cruxmont and the Don't Mind series, so here's how this works. Don't Mind Cruxmont, the story of Dr. Kingston, Neil, and Little English Village, is only a single season long. The next Don't Mind story will follow new people, new mysteries, and a new location. Don't Mind is an anthology of full, complete stories. All of these stories are made possible by our Patreon. If you want the latest updates and stories, all ad-free, please check out the many benefits of becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash foolandscholar. Thank you for listening. And enjoy this episode of Don't Mind Cruxmont. <laughs> Previously on Don't Mind Cruxmont. Having reached the outskirts of Cruxmont, the duo split up to search for further clues to Colin's whereabouts and further dive into the mystery of the strange village. Dr. Kingston ran into Reverend John at the church, who she lied to about moving to Cruxmont for love. Placated by Gwen's story, Reverend John explained the history of the murals inside the chapel of St. Dorothea of the Hills. While across the village in the festival fields, Neil spoke with the distraught Mike and Jeff and discovered that Colin might still be alive. Back at the church, just as the Plum Festival began, Gwen discovered that the Reverend and the church itself were not truly part of any organized religion, as Cruxmont remains alone and isolated from the Church of England. good of you. Nice of you to come see me. Yeah, well, um, I want to know that you're doing well. It's important. You're important. Look, I hope you know how really sorry I am for it. And putting you Colin, in... Colin, stop. I, I'm, I'm not here for an apology. I'm here because you're my little brother, and if anything... I'm sorry. What? I should have done more, and I just wish you had known you can come to me for anything. I was a shit brother when we were little. But now, I should have let you know that you could come and talk to me. And you're not a burden. You're my family. And not in the shitty family way like mom and dad. You're trying. And I'm so goddamn proud of you for that. Nice speech. Thanks. <laughs> yeah? I had to practice. Um, so, how's it going on in here? It's good. Going good. There's stuff I didn't know I needed. Like, I've been so focused on just cutting out the drugs, and that by itself was so, so far away, right? They never thought about what comes after that. I get it. And I'm glad they're helping you with all of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't apologize. If you're not going to let me say it, you don't get to. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I'm glad they can give you what you need here. I wanted to help you, but... I didn't know where to start. Or how. This is good. Professionals. Big fan of professionals. Yeah... I get it. Imagine some people actually went to school to deal with my shit. Can you imagine wanting to deal with me? Now there's some people with the real problems. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I have one of my group talk therapy sessions, so I have to go, but I can, like, send you a schedule later so you can visit when I have more time. Yeah, works for me. I've got work to do, so it's fine. I just wanted to check in, see how you're doing. Uh... By the way, you need anything? <laughs> Maybe a plan or something. This room has no color. Right. Uh, I'll bring one next time. See you, man. Bye. Uh, Neil Mitchell? 
checking out? Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Now, we have a note on file about your method of payment. It says here you're not set up with an insurer. Is that correct? Yeah, um... My brother Colin isn't under any insurance plan, so... Uh, we're paying out of pocket. We only have your information on file for the payments. Is there a payment method you would like to add on your brother's behalf? S- sorry, um, no. I said we, but it's it's me. I'll, I'll, I'll be taking care of it. Sorry for the wording. Okay, no problem, Mr. Mitchell. Now, it says that the last payment on your card ending in 4737 didn't go through. What? Uh, uh, could you could you try again for me, please? It looks like we tried twice, and both times it was refused. Is there another card you would like to pay with? Uh, how much is it? That would be the total for this week. Uh, can I split it over a few cards? Yes, you can. Okay, um, let's do a third on each of these three. Have you heard about our financing options for those patients without insurance? Yeah, it's just... Well, it comes off even worse in the end. What about a charity or church? There are several that help out in situations like this. Or there is the option of public rehabilitation and therapy centers. Cradlewood has one about two hours from here. Would you go to Cradlewood? We looked at that place. It's the opposite of helpful for most people. It was on the news for having two fake therapists and an outbreak of bedbugs, for God's sake. Just an option. Your cards went through. Please let us know in the future if you need to change your payment methods before payment is due. Yeah. Thanks. Before we begin with our festivities, thank you. Thank you for coming, and thank you all the more for supporting our village. The people you meet today at each store and display have grown up learning their craft from their parents and forefathers. <laughs> now, no more of my blather. Let the festival commence. What? Gwen. Uh, yes? Can I help you? Gwen, it's it's me. Oh, right. The fox mask. Oh, oh. They have them for the children, but I... Thought it might help me go unrecognized. Neil, why are you... Covered in juice. Jeff pushed me into a refreshment stand. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you? You look at a set. This is unbelievable. Not a single mention of Millie. No moment of silence. Nothing at all. Maybe not everyone knows yet. Or the family wants to keep it private. This is a public event after all. Why aren't you at the church? I was interrupted by Reverend John when I got there. But I saw where he hides the extra key for when I go back. Neil, the chapel here isn't even part of the larger church. I don't know a lot about the structure of the church as a whole, but it's certainly abnormal not to even be registered. At least I would think. Does that explain the gravestones? I would think an independent religious group could really do as they wish, so it would certainly permit it, but not explain it. The teenagers, Mike and Jeff, they were all upset when they asked about the survey. And somehow this survey had something to do with Millie walking into the pond. Huh. They were scared of something. Whatever it was that Millie knew, they know. What are the drums for? The Crux Swant family. Mike Clark. Every year we begin with a tradition. The youth of Crux Swant honor their elders and those that came before. And for this, we are humbled. I can't see. As our elders What's join us this here, way. our children present to them the twisted boughs of the Cruxmont plum trees, the intertwining symbol of our lives. We are family and friends. We are old and new. And all our hands work the earth and tend the trees because they endure longer than our time beneath the sky. We begin this year's ceremony with my own lovely daughter, Gloria, who will present her gift to my father, Basil. Come on up, darling. Watch your step. For you, Grandpa. I made it myself. Mum helped a bit. 
And now, as the line continues, let the festival not stop on our account. <laughs> Music! Is that kind of ceremony normal? I don't know. Little villages in every county have their own rituals, I'm sure. Yeah, I guess. There's Jeff and Mike. And Amy. It looks like they're in line for their grandparents, too. Mike's barely standing. They don't look very happy. In fact, Amy looks downright dreadful. Well, Lily just died. Oh, yes, of course, I'm sorry. They do have the bows, though. Quite a few. Well, they have more than one grandparent each. It all just seems so ordinary, really. Traditions and quirks aside, the old and the young are part of loving families. The trees are just trees, and the plums are just fruit. The village is open to everyone. The visitors are excited. And yet... You don't trust it? Not at all. Not in my bones. This feels... off. I found proof that Colin was here, at least at some point. And I don't mean to upset you or make you worry, but are you sure what you're looking for is here? That it even exists? No, I'm not. But I can't stop looking, not now. I think I understand. I'm gonna go out into the other orchards to look for more possible campsites. Hopefully it'll be easy to sneak around with all the farm workers stuck here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to speak with some of the elders. If I'm right, they should retain an acute mental clarity. You be careful, Neil. The constable is around here somewhere, and he was very adamant we leave. Yeah, I know. You too. Mm Mm-hmm. Hello. Enjoying the festival? Oh, certainly. Uh, should be another wonderful year. Uh, the singing was divine. A perfect start. <laughs> and you? It's been wonderful. I'm Gwen. Are you from Cruxmont? Hello, Gwen. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm from Cruxmont. <laughs> Are you enjoying our little corner of the countryside? Yeah. How did you find the festival? It's, it's already so lovely. It really is. Well, I was... Um, Hoping I could ask you a few questions. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not looking to be in the papers. Uh, no, I just want to spend some time with the family today. Uh, mm. I do enjoy the festival, won't you? Mm. Check out the stalls and wares. The plum leather's new, just this year. Uh, yeah. No, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll just... All oh, right, thank you. Yeah. Hello. Enjoying the festival? Oh, so I am. Lovely. I'm Gwen, and you are... Ah, hello there, Gwen. Uh, I'm George. Do us a favour and pass us another cider from that crate, would you? <laughs> Here. Ah, ta very much. Uh, don't see much reason to roam yourself over there when other folk have perfectly fine working legs. The plum cider? Aye, it's... Uh, my own recipe, uh, invented when I was a lad. Uh, smooth and crisp, it's, a, it's just a better product. Uh, the kind you can enjoy in every season. And I enjoy it every day. Oh, oh pardon me. Uh, you drink this much every day? No, no, never. Um, my daughter would never allow it. Uh, nor her daughter. Nor hers. Uh, nor hers, but uh, a little bit, you know, just a... Uh, a glass for supper. <laughs> oh, that's good. You had me worried for a second there. Ah, well, it's me legs that don't want to work. Me liver's still kicking. <laughs> Mind you, it's, uh, it's had rigorous training. You seem a very happy man, George. Feeling a bit of a festival high. Uh, well, why shouldn't I be happy? I've, I've got me village, me drink, and all me descendants laying boughs at me feet. Well, well me wheels anyway, but... but Still, it's a lovely thing. Oh, I still remember when I was a child and I'd first put the boughs at the feet of my great-grandfather, uh, though he only had a cane. Carved from a plum tree? Hey, uh, you know, <laughs> I never thought to ask. 
And what do you do with the boughs and braids when the festival is over? Uh, we'll, we'll put them up at home ah. and uh, they'll last a few months until we'll burn them in the winter. <laughs> I'm so sorry that this year's festival had to follow such a... such a tragic event. Did you, um... Did you know her? Oh, you mean the Birch girl? Mm. Yeah, little Millie Birch. Aye, and it would have been her last year giving out a bow. Oh, so sad to see it happen again. A- again? Well, she walked the survey, hadn't she? I mean, it's how it always goes. It's, uh, it's such a sad, sad thing. I mean, she were a bright lass. And, uh, now, don't go putting me in a solemn mood, Miss Gwen. It's festival time. So pull up a stool and grab a drink, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get this one. Oh, oh thanks. Uh, but I can't promise to be the best of company. Oh, uh, don't mind that. I mean, at my age, uh, <laughs> I just like to talk. It's it, it's just so nice to see this kind of festival going on again. It's been so long. How has Crooksmont fared during the pandemic? A small place like this? Well, 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 did very well. I mean. We had no cases for the for the whole first year. Uh, regular tests once they were invented, and all of us working together. Hmm. And as soon as we had the availability, the whole town got jabbed. Uh. <laughs> See, so, so, so it was it was a lot easier th- this time around uh, with, with the internet and all. I mean, w- when the Spanish flu was here, uh, it, it, it felt like the devil gripping the country piece by piece. Everyone worried and uh, uh, waiting for, for news in the papers. And, and we, we didn't host festivals f- for outsiders. Uh, no, no. It, it was just just us. J- just for those we loved and trusted. The Spanish flu? Well, we, we didn't know enough back then. So the, so the fear felt different, like. You can remember that far back? Well, uh, as clear as day. Uh, the sleepless nights, the, the, the worry, the, believing me, my second child would be born into a world of, of fear and disease. And, but but we, we, we found strength in Crooksmont. Friends and, and, and family and, 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 and the small joys we, we could get at home, and just like always. Second child in 1918? No, no. No, uh, she, was, she was born in early 1920. It's 2022. Why, uh, how time flies. <laughs> <laughs> what else? From when you were a child, what else do you remember, George? Uh, uh, li- little Victoria, but, well, not now, but, but w- when I held her in my arms for the first time, uh, see, see uh, Queen Victoria died me... My mother cried for days, uh, but, but, but holding the grandbaby in her arm now, that was weeping. Tears of pure joy. Uh, Did you see her cry? Were you there? Uh, uh, hand us another bottle, would you, Gwen? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, take mine. I haven't had a chance to drink yet. Oh, uh, uh, thank, thank you. Uh, yes, yes, I was there. Uh, I, I was too young to, to care at the time, but... But, but on the day of mourning, well, well, we all gathered together in the, in the chapel to mourn her, and and they cried and I and cried and. Uh, how many children do you have, Gwen? Oh, um, but I'm afraid that's not on the cards for me, George. Oh, it's a, a pity, pity. Uh, you you could set me on fire like that effigy, with all these tree boughs laid at my feet. <laughs> Where, 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 where do your babes have babes and, and, and so on and so on? Uh, the, the numbers grow larger than, than one ever thinks. <laughs> so, so were you in the war? Uh, which war? How many wars do you think I've seen? I mean, uh, great wars become one in a, in a long list, it seems. But uh, uh, no, no. Uh, I, I didn't go to war. I, I had a sickness, see, uh, uh, it seems like sickness is a, 
the light walls were always coming back round there. No, 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 where was I? Oh, oh I children. Ah, uh, my fourth daughter. Uh, well, she was named for Queen Elizabeth. Hmm. Queen Elizabeth II? No, 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 the, the Queen Mother. Uh, June the 12th, 1937. Uh, oh, my little Elizabeth. And her grandkids gave you the bows today? Well, little Elizabeth never got to have children. Oh. She, she went with the others, like so many after the survey. Uh, uh, do, do you mean like, like Millie Birch? I'm so sorry. Oh, she was a smart one, she was. I mean, she used to run circles round the other kids. Um, George, if everything you're saying is true, granted you are a few bottles deep, it, uh, it sounds like you're telling me you were born in the 1890s. <laughs> well, that's impossible. But Elizabeth looked so mad, I mean... Uh, I, I should have known all that fire she had for life. Uh, she looked like she wanted to burn me with it. George? George? Stop those tears and go and talk to your grandchildren, will you? It's not the time to be sad. How many of those did you drink? Oh, wait, wait, if it's next to me, it's mine. Come then, you old fool. Let's get you some food. Oh, oh, wait, please. George said he remembered the Spanish flu and the death of Queen Victoria. Don't you go believing a word from his drunken old lips, hmm? He's a, he's a rambler when he drinks. He loves the attention. Oh, I've got it all up here, Julia. Uh, it's no lie. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh. Regardless, you've got family to talk to. I'll get you on over to the picking booth. A little Wendy's waiting. Ah, oh, good, good. Ah, uh, little Wendy reminds me of her, you know. Ah, oh, that fire. Well, go- goodbye, then, great friend. Uh, it's been nice meeting you. Goodbye, George. <laughs> One hundred and thirty. Want anything to eat? Sure. What you got? Uh, let's see. We got ketchup, Kalamata olives, half-drunk kombucha, artichoke hearts, or um, strawberry jelly. Get the jelly out. You still store crackers on the top shelf? <laughs> there we go, because I have peanut butter. Sounds like dinner. Uh, pull up a stool. This time around... I want it to be easier, and I really want you to know I'll do what I have to do to make this work. I'm beyond grateful for this. Really. After last time, you had no obligation to let me crash here. You never had an obligation to help my sorry ass. Yeah, I know. It's not all about you, dude. I do it for the karma points. It's all about my cosmic reward. <laughs> I was thinking I'd start looking for jobs on Monday. Do you think you're ready? I mean, seriously, no pressure. Just take all the time you need. I'd rather you take the time to focus on recovery than- I just spent 60 days focusing on nothing but recovery. And yeah, I have a lot of stuff I'm still gonna have to deal with, but part of what I need to do is find my new normal, a routine. Sitting around here on my asses all day playing Intrepid isn't gonna give me that. Well, great then. I can help you look for something. Do you have a resume? <laughs> well. Yeah. We had a workshop on it at the center, but I don't have much on it aside from graduating high school and holding that one job at Gary's Pizza. And I can almost assure you that I won't get a recommendation from them. Don't worry about it. We'll make it work. So, um, what other kinds of workshops did you have in there? Anything fun? Is that rude? 
I'm not I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm just I'm just trying to catch up. No, yeah. It's fine. Most of the time we had therapy sessions in groups talking stuff out. And those helped. Workshops were for special things to learn and we got to choose them with one of the aides, trying to find out what would benefit us most. Like the resume thing is important for me, but not important for the car salesman's kid who wouldn't need it. We had one workshop though I liked. No jokes, sorry, I won't tell you. Okay. No jokes. Manifestation. It was all about envisioning what you want out of life. We would look through all these magazines and tear articles or photos that interested us and try to find out what our bigger picture in life is. Try to visualize a life beyond the drugs and beyond the rehab. Uh huh. So, um, what kind of things did you put in your scrapbook? <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha, well, it helps, dipshit. Okay, seriously. What did you see? I don't think I'm meant for the city. I think if I can save up enough, find a job and all, I'll move out somewhere rural. Looked at a lot of pictures of Montana. Seems nice. Calm. Peaceful. Montana? Uh, that's not bad. What else? Made me think I might like a job outside. Like, I don't know if I could ever get to be a tour guide or something. Not sure anyone should ever put their trust in me like that, but maybe a groundskeeper at a park or something. Garge man in some small little town in the mountains. Feels calmer out there. Like no one's pressuring me. Like no one knows. I can understand that. We'll look for something. You'll have to put up with my apartment for now, but, you know, one day. Thanks. So how's it been with you? How's Piper? Work? Eh, work's been work. It's fine. Uh, spent a lot of time either in meetings or staring at a computer all day, and honestly, it's starting to take its toll. But I did get a 3% raise at the end of last month, so that's something, I guess. That's great. Or at least good. <laughs> You always said that place couldn't function without you, so maybe they know it now. And Piper? Piper and I split up. Just in a match. You'll find someone better. She was smart, but it seemed really hard to make her happy. Yeah, I guess so. <sighs> Man, you must be tired after everything. Uh, I set the cot up in the office so you can take your stuff up there and take a nap if you want. I have some work to catch up on, so I'm going to be busy for the next few hours anyway. Sounds good to me. Maybe this evening we can break out those controllers and try some co-op. Hey, where's your PlayStation? Ah, damn thing broke on me a couple weeks ago. But there's a new movie that I've wanted to stream that I think you'd like. Bank Heist Gone Wrong. Yeah, sounds good. Colin! Stay where you are! Colin! Where'd you go? Colin! Colin! Where are you? Nasty. Colin! What are you doing out here? <whistles> Only one orchard is open for the festival. You can't just go gallivanting around anywhere as you please. It's not safe for you or the trees. We have to preserve the orchard. Wait. Wait a minute. It's you. 
You were supposed to have left. You need to leave. No! I saw him. Colin was on the hill. He ran down here. Where is he? He needed help. Where is he? You need to go, boy. You need to get out of Cruxmont now, today. Where's Colin? He was here. I saw him. I heard him. You can't keep him here. You should have left. I'm not going anywhere. Where? Holy shit. Where did you see him? Oh. Oh. You. Me? You should have left this place. We told you again and again. I even let you out without charges after your little stunt in the chapel. I'm not going anywhere until I find Colin. He was here. Slow down. You really saw him? If he's here, we can look for him. Where did you see him? Where did he go? I saw him over on the other hilltop. And I and I saw something moving through the orchard on the hill. I didn't think it was Colin at first, but then I heard him yell for help. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to tell who it was from so far away. I could tell. It was him. Colin went down this side of the hill. So I ran, trying to follow him, but... When I got down there, nothing. I don't know where he went. Go back up the hill. Show me where you saw him. Yeah, sure. This way. Uh. Grab his other arm. Right. Don't Mind Cruxmont. Written and created by K.A. Stats. Produced and directed with sound design by Travis Fengroff. Edited with sound design, mixing, and mastering by Dane Leonardson. Dialogue editing by Austin Beach. And with script and casting consulting by Gemma Amore. Starring Adjua Ando, Daniel Demerin, Preston Young, Sinclair Bell, David Alt, Vic Ramirez, Erica Sanderson, Tim Lee, Sarah Golding, and Roger Bomer. With executive producers Dennis Greenhill, Michael Villegas, Carol Vengroff, and AJ Punkin. With music by Stephen Malin. This episode would not be possible without the support of our listeners on Patreon. So please consider supporting us there at patreon.com slash foolandscholar, or by sharing this show with a friend. This episode is copyrighted 2022 by Fool and Scholar Productions. Thank you for listening.